time to hear the word of God according to the pattern. Hallelujah, praise God. Glory to God. It's been, it's been two um, wonderful days of experiencing good word. Hallelujah. If I have a witness, come on, somebody say hallelujah wherever you are. Glory to God. It's been, um, we, this, the conference started all the way from Friday um, Saturday and today is the final day of the conference and it has been days of experiencing the grace of God over this house hallelujah um, before I continue I'm going to also say thank you to my pastor for this opportunity to be a blessing to God's people it um, definitely is a privilege to be sharing with you today and um, I believe that at the end of the meeting at the end of this conference you would have one tangible thing that you're going to take back home with and say yes this is what I got from business conference hallelujah so please get your pen get your book ready but most importantly get your spirit man ready for what God is about to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm expectant. I'm excited, you know, for what God is about to say. You know, last Sunday, you know, whilst um, some of our pastors, I think it was Pastor Yemi that was up, you know, he made, he said something. He said, God is also as expectant as we are expectant. You know, so remember to expectant because something is about to happen in this place today hallelujah wherever you are i want you to shut your eyes and lift your hands and i want to begin to pray and say let there be a stirring in my spirit let somebody begin to pray this moment and begin to declare that even as god's word comes let it find a good ground in my spirit my spirit man is incubating God's word today and I'm birthing, I'm bringing forth a hundredfold harvest. Somebody begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to say, I'm bringing forth a harvest in a dimension of the hundredfold like never before. Lake Regan Tili Bala Suto Baka Rike de Rebo Shata. Oh, Makilan Tuba Ringe Lebo Suke de Bo Shata Labaha. Oh, Father, we give you praise. We thank you for your word in this place. We acknowledge your faithfulness to us as a church. We acknowledge your faithfulness to us as a people. And we say, Be thou exalted, King of glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, very quickly, um, I'm sure by now you all are aware of the text for Pistis Conference. So don't get tired. I want you to go back to the book of Romans, chapter 1, from verse 16 to 19. You know, I believe by now somebody should know those scriptures um, by heart. And we, I want us to read. Um, I would like you to make this as real as possible. You know, so whilst I'm reading it over here, I want you to also read it wherever you are, in your car, in your house, wherever you're seated. I want you to read this same scripture with me in concert. Can we do it, church? Hallelujah. The book of Romans 1:16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. 
for God had shielded unto them. Thank you, Father, for your word that proceeds out of my mouth in faith. I ask that today that your word is going to stir someone to manifestation in the name of Jesus. I ask that you will override my thoughts and my intents and let your heart be communicated to your people by faith today. In Jesus' name we pray and the church shouted amen. Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to be sharing with us um, what I title the righteous advantage. Someone say the righteous advantage. And, you know, one of the key things that the Holy Spirit uh, ministered to me, which has also been resonating in my spirit, you know, um, he told me, he said, that the believer whose body is the abode of the Holy Spirit has a faith lifestyle which is designed to reveal the righteousness of God. I'm going to say that again. The believer whose body is the abode of the Holy Spirit has a faith lifestyle which is designed to reveal the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. If you look at the scripture that we have just read, you know, the Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. We are all aware that the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, if my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, it means that the Holy Spirit has got a residential address, which is the body of the believer. Hallelujah. You know, so you understand where I'm coming from. You know, when I say that the believer has a body that is in the abode of the Holy Spirit and he has a lifestyle that has been designed, he has a lifestyle that has been architected to reveal, to show off the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. You know, so the Holy Spirit has an address. Somebody touch yourself and say, my body is a, the residential address of the Holy Spirit. You know, so when you go about saying, I live in 322 Ferndale Street, you know, the Holy Spirit says, I live in St. Anuma. You know, I am the address. I carry God on the inside of me. Hallelujah. You know, so the Holy Spirit has an address in you. And he does not just reside in you the way you are. He resides in you with all the glory and all the blessedness of heaven. So the Holy Spirit is tabernacled in you with all, you know, it is, it, it, it is, it is a package. You know, when, when, when the, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, uh, my, my uh, I, there was a very prominent man that came to visit my dad, you know, at, when I was quite young. And, you know, when this man came, that was the first time I, could, I saw guns so close. You know, they, the moment they came to the house, they took over every entrance and every exit in our, in our compound. You know, I was sitting in the children's lounge. And just by the door of the children's lounge, you had the man with the jacket there with his gun in a pouch. By the main door, by every window, you had a security man there. And they were all there because there is there was a very important man that was having a meeting with my own dad. So when the Holy Spirit is with is is tabernacled in a believer. He is sabbatical in you with all the blessedness of heaven, with all the heavenly protocols. Hallelujah. You know, so 
we need to understand here from the scriptures that we have just read righteousness which is the nature of God expressed through the believer because all of God is tabernacle in that believer you know so you can say I have God in me and his nature is expressed through me but the revealing of this nature is only achieved and facilitated by faith hallelujah we're going somewhere this morning you know so the nature of God is is expressed it's achieved and it is facilitated by faith somebody say by faith hallelujah you know so it is okay for us to say that faith becomes the prerequisite to express this lifestyle. So faith becomes a, a prerequisite for the display of the nature of God. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. You know, so the believer does not just carry the nature of God, but the nature of God tabernacled in the believer becomes not just an expression, but it becomes a source of defense. Hallelujah. The nature of God in the believer becomes a source of defense it becomes a source of immunity for the believer you know in so many countries you know there is an immunity that a seated president has and that is what the believer that is expressing the life of god actually enjoys the believer enjoys the immunity that comes with the expression that comes with the blessedness of heaven he enjoys the immunity that comes by being the residential address of the holy spirit glory to god isn't that just wonderful you know, if you sit down for one moment to think about it, you know, think about the fact that I, right now, wherever you are, I have got God on the inside of me. I have got the Holy Spirit resident in me. In me, the Holy Spirit has got a master bedroom. In my spirit, the Holy Spirit has got himself an ensuite bedroom. He wakes up in the morning and he goes into the shower. He has a nice time because he is tabernacled in me. I have in me a very comfortable abode for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, so when we talk about the lifestyle, when we talk about the nature of righteousness that is in the believer, it means that everything or anything that is experienced in heaven becomes an experience in me. Glory to God. I don't know if that is too if that is too big for somebody to chew or you know a, a religious mindset will not be able to handle this <laughs> so we need to understand that everything that cannot be found in heaven cannot be found in me everything that cannot be found in heaven cannot be found in the believer because the believer then becomes an expression of God hallelujah if 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 sickness cannot be found in heaven then the body of the believer cannot experience sickness you are immune to sickness if lack cannot be found in heaven, then lack cannot be found in the believer. Let's run. Let's look at 
the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at the book of Ephesians 6 and I'm going to read from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, and having done all to stand. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins guard with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, I'm going to stop in verse 14. So when you look at you know, what this scripture here is talking about, it first went on to say, that we have got to put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. So when I am putting on the whole armor of God, the Bible began to talk about the shield and, you know, but today I'm going to stay with the breastplate of righteousness. You know, here the Bible says that we should put on the breastplate of righteousness and what does that do? You know, if you think about the movies that we've watched and you know the experience that the Romans had you know when they go for battle and they wear their breastplates you know the breastplate brings them to, you know it's made of materials you know when things are thrown at them it does it's not able to penetrate them because they are protected the breastplate covers them right from this point down to this point and it makes sure that it shields their heart. If anything is able to penetrate the heart of the believer, then you're done. If you're in battle, you know, that's why you see the FBI, you see the police, you know, um, here, everywhere, they are, they, are, they are bulletproof. They make sure they're able to protect all of this place because Everything here is fragile. They know that if the bullet gets to the arm, I can get treated. If it gets to the legs, oh yeah, I can get treated. But when the bullet penetrates the heart, it is dead. So the Bible says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. It means that if I'm going to be able to survive, because now we are moving away from just expressing the nature. I'm talking about how the nature serves as a weapon. How does my righteousness serve as a weapon of defense and as a, as, as a tool of immunity? Hallelujah. So the believer at this point has got to make sure that he is he. He is able to survive all the wiles of the adversary. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, so when you when we begin to a, 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 a explore, you know, what God has given to the believer, when we begin to explore the 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 the, the nature that resides in the believer, you understand that. If I have on my righteousness breastplate, there are certain things that cannot get to me. Sickness cannot get to me because I got my righteous advantage. Lack cannot get to me because I just got me a righteous breastplate on. You know, when, when I'm moving out and I'm stepping to the place of the battle, I've got my righteousness on. You know, so my righteousness 
is not just for a display or a show off. It is supposed to be a source of defense to me. It is supposed to be a source of immunity that brings me to a place where I am able to, I'm able to withstand. You know, everyone is talking about the novel COVID-19 and oh, COVID-19 did this, COVID-19 didn't do that. But the people that have got their righteousness breastplates on, glory to God, you know, they're about, they, they, they walk about, you know, they walk about as though there is nothing going on in the world because you have got an advantage and it is called righteousness. Somebody say, I've got an advantage and it is the nature of God. The nature of God is the advantage of the believer. It sets you apart from the, the, such that when people are complaining of darkness, you are, you are enjoying and you are basking in light. Just like in Egypt, when there was darkness, in Goshen, there was light. That is the, the distinct difference that exists between a man that is walking in without his breastplate and a man that has got his breastplate on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, so we come here to understand that when, 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 when I, I got my righteousness on, it provides me with an immunity from everything that is associated with the falling state of man. So my righteousness brings me to a place of that separates me from anything that is associated with the falling state of man. When man fell, that is when they could they were introduced to pain. When man fell, that is when he was introduced to hard work. How come I need to work for everything I need? Then where is the place of the grace of God? So the, the, the fallen nature of man brings man to a place where he needs to strive for everything that he needs or everything that he desires. But the righteousness nature brings man to a place of immunity such that he does not know what it means to experience lack. The righteousness nature brings you to a place where you are immune from everything that is associated with the fallen states. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm loving this. This is good work. Hallelujah. So the believer is the carrier of the life of God. He is a carrier of the life just like God has it in himself. So if there is anything that the life of God cannot tolerate, then the believer should not have tolerance for it. As a matter of fact, the believer should have zero tolerance for anything that is associated with the fallen state of man. Because the moment you begin to tolerate things that comes with the fallen state of man, you are acting as though Christ never died. You are tolerating things that have already been paid for. So the lifestyle of righteousness has got to be a lifestyle that has zero tolerance for things that God cannot tolerate. The nature of God has zero tolerance for disease. The nature of God has zero tolerance for sickness. The nature of God has zero tolerance for poverty. Hence, the believer must have zero, zero tolerance for all those things. Glory to God. But we must understand that just like we've been teaching for a while now about how faith is the lifestyle that facilitates the expression of God in the believer. Faithlessness is also, 
a facilitator of a pseudo, a false kind of nature. What I call a pseudo righteousness. So faithlessness and fear facilitates and brings to the a believer to a point of pseudo righteousness. You know, before I continue about a righteous advantage, you know, let us take a moment to actually click and check what is a pseudo righteousness. What is false righteousness? You know, let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Let's look at the book of Matthew chapter 5. Glory to God. Woo! The book of Matthew chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 20. The book of Matthew 5. I don't know who was there. Okay, I just got there now. The book of Matthew 5 from verse 20. These are the red letters in the Bible. And Jesus said, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter, enter into the kingdom of heaven. And now, the question here, someone is going to say is, what is the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees? Um, let's Let's run to the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 10 and I read from verse 3. The Bible says, For they be ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves Unto the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. You know, so the Bible here talks about the righteousness here. It says they are ignorant of God's righteousness. Then they went about to establish their own righteousness. So the righteousness of the Pharisees is a righteousness that is of a physical nature. And let me state it here clearly, clearly on air. You can quote me. Pseudo-righteousness or physical righteousness leads to death. I'm going to say that again. False righteousness leads to death. Hallelujah. You know what false righteousness is? You know, earlier when we, when we began to study the book of Ephesians 6... You know, we, we, we were talking about the breastplate of righteousness. You know, false righteousness technically looks like true righteousness to the eyes of, the, to the physical eyes. It's like a military man or a policeman that is going for a raid. And all of a sudden, he sees all his mates, the strap up with their, with their bulletproof. And he sees that, oh, the bulletproof is made of black material. It is this thick. So he just goes and he cuts a piece of, a piece of foam and puts some cloth in it and ties it on his chest. And says, in fact, my own material is even thicker than the one that you're wearing. You know, the other person is wearing a bulletproof that is probably this thick. But you go get some material in your house that is probably this thick and you wear it on your chest, you are going to be the first to die in the battlefield. Because you are not wearing something that has the capacity to withstand the wiles of the adversary. One bullet that comes at you and you are gone. So the believer must understand that false righteousness would lead to death. You know, it's, you, you can't say it's just any material. It is not just any material. False righteousness brings you to a place of becoming a victim whereby true righteousness brings the believer to a place of becoming a victor. Glory to God. You know, so false righteousness births victims. True righteousness births victors. Because 
True righteousness is after the nature of God. False righteousness is man-made. False righteousness comes at the point where men begin to think that they can make things to become for themselves. False righteousness talks about men and women that think that they can help God. False righteousness uh, comes from people that think that righteousness is about things that happen in the realm of the physical. The Bible says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The Bible says we must worship him in Numa and in Alethea, which talks about the characteristic of God. It means that if I must come to God, I must be able to transact with him in a realm that he understands. I must be able to transact with God in a realm that he operates from. I cannot afford to try to transact from the realm of the physical. God is, some people have limited righteousness to a realm of what eyes can see. But we are talking here about the nature of God. We are talking about the breastplate that is able to separate man from the falling nature. You know, if your friend is still operating in the dimension of the falling nature, then both of you do not roll together. We don't walk in the same realm. We are not of the same class. We are not in the same strata. The righteousness of God is what creates the strata that we all operate from. When I operate in God's righteousness, I'm operating from a premium place. When you operate from a pseudo righteousness, you are operating from a place, a, a less, a, a, a place of a lower class. You are operating from the place, from a falling place, from a place of a falling nature. Hallelujah! You know, so the believer must understand that. When, I, when I'm walking in God's kind of righteousness, I'm operating with an advantage. I've got me a premium advantage and it is called the righteousness of the glory of God. Hallelujah. The Bible, you know, the scripture that we just read, you know, from the book of Romans chapter 1 from verse 17, the Bible talks about the revealing of God. God's righteousness. You know, the revealing here talks about a show off. Oh my God. When you just bought you a new car, you drove that car to your friend's place. Not because you wanted some validation from your friend. You wanted to show off and say, listen, I just got me a new baby. It's called some Bentley. Oh, I just got me a, some, um, some nice Porsche. Uh, I don't know what that dream car looks like. Recently, I, you know, just before I, before today's sermon, I have just started to change my taste. My taste has been for things that are above. I've be, I, I have begun to think and desire things that are not just beneath. You know, so when you, when the Bible talks about showing off God's kind of righteousness. It means that I have got to be able to show off this God kind of life to everyone around me. Glory to God. So the believer that is going to be a revealer of God's kind of righteousness has got to be one that is ready to show God off. You've got to show God off everywhere you go. You can't afford to show him off when you show up in church. You can't afford to show him off when you come to the conference. But when you find yourself in your workplace, you are not able to show him off. You know, when, 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 you, when your pastor calls you and you say amen to a prayer he was praying over the phone. And somebody says, oh, are you a Christian? 
you say, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an extremist. I'm, you know, because you are scared that people are going to castigate you. I have always told people that one that is with Christ is one that with a premium advantage. So when people ask you, are you with brother Donald? Say to them, yes, because I, you might call me a fanatic, you might call me an extremist, but I'm happy to show God off. Just like you want to show off your new clothes, I'm showing off my righteous advantage because the period you are spending 5,000 rands in the hospital on your child. I got me some cost savings because I got a righteous advantage. My children have got a righteousness breastplate. My wife, my family, they got a righteousness breastplate because when everyone is talking about a casting down, come to my house because I house the Holy Spirit. Spirit. We are constantly talking about the lifting up. I've learned to take my vocabulary to another new level because I'm aware I carry God on the inside of me. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Somebody say, let my light so shine. Hallelujah. You know, so when the Bible says that my light has got to shine, it means that I have got to be one that is ready to brag about God. When people are bragging about their car, when people are bragging about their house, when they are bragging about the things that they got, you've got to brag about the intimate fellowship that you share with the Holy Spirit. When they tell you that have you seen the latest car that was released by Bentley? You say to them, when was the last time you heard from the Holy Spirit? Oh my God. They rely on the intel from Google. You rely on the intel from the Spirit which brings you to a place where you are constantly current. You have the latest info because sometimes I feel like the Holy Spirit gossips because he tells you even the things that you don't expect him to tell you. He tells you the things that that constantly sets you apart. He puts you in a place of, 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 of one that has got an advantage. Hallelujah. You know, so when I show God off, it leads me out there to constantly win a soul to the kingdom. Listen, when I walk up to you and I want to preach the kingdom of God to you, and you are saying that, oh, stop, I don't want to hear it. Not just fanatic. Listen, you need to be able to always look at people that don't want to take the gospel as disadvantaged. Listen, when you go to a place and people are filling forms, very soon, you know, when I start my company, you know, people fill forms and they say, what is your disability? When a person ticks no, ask my you born again. If he says no, tell, 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 please tick disability because he's got a disability if he, he does not have the premium advantage you have if i'm going to employ you in my company and you am born again then i know that you are always going to be retarded a retarded person is not one with down syndrome a retarded person is one that has not got the advantage of the holy spirit you know so when you when they tell you tell them that this being dis being disabled is not when you are physically maimed, when you are blind, deaf, or dumb. It is when you have not got the advantage that is called righteousness. When you don't know what it means to enjoy the life of God. When you don't know what it means to enjoy the life that we carry. Then you are operating in a realm of disadvantage. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, so when I'm showing off God, it means that I cannot do that when I'm sick. I 
can't be I, I can't be going around and be saying I'm showing off God and, and all of a sudden I, 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 I'm saying um, brother yeah, yeah, I, I got I got me some migraine. How come you got some migraine? If your God cannot fix that migraine, how come you think he can fix my problem? So I show God off because I understand that already in his word, he has taken care of my health. You know, so when I constantly have my breastplate on, then it means that I've got a place where I'm constantly in health. Glory to God. I can't show God off when I'm sick because I know that sickness is not in the nature of God. I cannot show God off when I'm operating in lack because I know that lack is not in the nature of God. The Bible says that he's got a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. It means that my God is rich. So when I'm showing him off, I'm showing him off with some good clothes. Hallelujah. You know, when I'm showing him off, and when, when, when you go out for evangelism, don't go out like a pauper. Don't go out like someone that hasn't eaten. Go out with your best clothes. Go out with your best cologne. Don't go and show God off. And men will think if this is what Christianity looks like, then I'm not going to be a Christian. You know, I remember uh, many years ago, you know, when I got to Johannesburg and I was going for an interview. That morning, I didn't have food to eat. I was hungry and I had to walk so many kilometers to the place of the interview. You know, I remember having a call with Pastor Pearl that day. And you know, she said to me, she said, Pastor, you know, when you're walking to that interview, what there with a mindset of someone that just had a fantastic British breakfast. You know, and imagine you know, that moment when I was going there, I was walking like one that had some bacon, some baked beans, some nice eggs, and you know, no great sandwich. You know, that was I was walking there as one that just had that kind of great breakfast. So that is the mindset that the believer always has. You can't afford to always be the one complaining. Um, brother, why were you not in church? I didn't have transport money. I've had to see myself walk so many miles to get to church. And that is because I knew that I had to be there. If I wasn't there, there was some that wasn't going to get blessed. You know, so many times when we were doing some missions work in Pretoria, we took monies that we were supposed to buy milk and we had to go and take the train just to be a blessing to somebody. But today, I'm not just buying milk, I'm buying milk and I'm driving my own car. So when I stay focused on this thing that you guys call church thing, God always brings you to a place of prosperity. Look at me right now, I'm rich because I got me all that I want. Listen to me, child of God. When you got yourself some righteousness advantage, it brings you to a place where you enjoy life in Christ. All round glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I love the scripture that says that the silver and the gold is his. You know, every morning when I'm driving, the business news, they tell you, oh, the gold is now selling at 2,000 rand per ounce. You know, the gold is one thing that never loses value. And the last time I checked, the streets of heaven is gold. My father, he owns all the gold in this world. So how dare you think that you have a right to be poor? You have got no right to exhibit poverty, be it poverty of the spirit or poverty of the pocket because you've got an advantage. You hail from a lineage of wealth. Abraham's blessings are yours. Abraham's was rich in cattle and in, in, in slaves and in everything you can think of and you've got a God 
that sits in the heavens and the earth is his footstool. You've got a God that has told you that I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. How dare you operate in a level and a standard that is less from what has been wailed over to you. How dare you operate in a level that is less from what the word of God has said about you. This is a time for you to understand that you are operating with a righteous advantage anywhere you go. Raise your shoulder up and say, I've got an advantage. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I've got a righteous advantage. When you walk into that interview, say to yourself, I've got me a righteous advantage. When you, when, when, when you go into the car dealership to pick a car, say, I've got me a righteous advantage. Listen, in the times, you know, the, there was a particular week, you know, just last week, you know, um, Every day of the week, somebody gives something to me. And you know, my wife reminded me something, you know, two days ago. And she said to me, do you realize that every day of last week, somebody gave you something, just a moment to change your confession. And I said to her, yes, I have been robbing myself. You know, on one weekend, somebody brought me some nice things. And the other day, somebody brought some nice things to my house. Listen, you can afford to live a life of where you enjoy things both in the realm of the spirit and in the realm of the physical. Some of you are saying, this earth is not my own, I'm just passing through. That song is so unscriptural because it makes the believer feel like, you know, when I go to heaven, I will enjoy the gold. Listen, if that is a revelation, it is okay. But as for me and my household, I'm going to enjoy the gold both here and in heaven. Because I know that my father has said I am blessed. I'm empowered to prosper. I'm empowered to succeed. I'm empowered to excel. You know, when people preach such a um, half Baked and a scriptural sermon, it stems from a place of unbelief, a place where people think that they can help God. You know, oh, I'm just content. You've got four kids living in one room apartment. Is that the is that the design of God for you? No. You know, so when God says that I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health. What he says is, he has given you a right to enjoy all the benefits of his life that is in you. Remember this one thing, if you do not remember anything again, that you carry God on the inside of you and he is tabernacling you with all the blessedness of heaven. All that God enjoys in heaven is in you, but the only way you can ex you can access this lifestyle is by faith. Glory to God. Somebody, wherever you are, I want to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody begin to pray loud in tongues wherever you are. I hear my spirit that somebody, you've got to change your confession. You've got to step away from where you have always been. Stop accepting the lies of the adversary. Stop accepting the position that the devil has put you in. This is a time, child of God, to lay hold on your righteous advantage. Somebody begin to pray and begin to declare, this is a new day for me. This is a new dawn. I am awoken in my spirit. I am showing up the righteousness of God. Leke reba kanta rebo shotorireks. Linge banta reba kosuka balanta rabaha. Oh, reke rebo sunto balinge rebo shot. 
Lenge ba si ke ba los ko ba shata. Oh Father, we give you praise. Be thou exalted King of glory. Oh, thank you, Father. Even for men that have been raised, men of the word and men of the spirit, men that are coming alive, even to their place in you. Father, we thank you for testimonies that are bound in this season, in our nation, like never before. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus. And just before I leave, I, I'm just going to say, I'm going to give you one opportunity. I'm going to make one altar call. If you are listening to me and you're not born again, you know you have not confessed Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. It means that you do not have the access to the lifestyle I've been talking about. You cannot experience the riches of his glory, of the inheritance of the saints, like the Bible talks about. And today, if you want to say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want you to say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today, I believe that you died and you resurrected and you ascended bodily. And I say, today, I confess you as my Lord. And as my Savior, all things are passed away, and all things are made new. Say thank you, because today I am your son. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said a prayer, I want you to please click on the link on the comment section. Fill a form. Someone is going to get in touch with you. The first 24 hours after you give your life to Jesus is the most important time of your life. So don't waste time. This is not a time to procrastinate. If there is a time to do it, it is now. Do it now. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being here. The service is going to continue shortly. And in a few hours, Pastor is going to be coming up. And it is going to be a great time of celebrating our righteousness in God. God bless you. I expect you to win. Bye-bye. I'll see you in the fortress of the service. God bless you.